Hello, this is Seher from Easy Peasy, and the topic we are going to discuss today is called as Mendel's Law of Segregation. The story started when an Austrian Catholic monk, Gregor Mendel, started planting peas in his monastery. Now, pea is a quite simple plant having both male and female inside its flower. So the anthers are acting as a male part of this flower, and stigma is acting as a female part of this flower. And the fertilization usually occurs by the wind or the bees. And this process is called as pollination. Now, what Gregor Mendel did was that he removed the anthers of one plant and make it a female flower. And then he took another flower and brushes the anthers of that flower to the stigma of this flower in order to fertilize it. This process is called as cross-pollination. Now, pea plants have seven different type of characteristics. That includes flower color can be purple or white. The plant height can be tall or short. The seed color can be yellow or green. The seed shape can be round or wrinkled. The pod color can be green or yellow. The pod shape can be full or flat and flower position can be axial or terminal. Now we will take only one characteristics of this plant and that is the pod color in order to see what happened when Mendel did the cross fertilization. So he took a true breed green pod and he fertilized it with a true breed yellow pod. In the first filial generation, all the plants have green pod as if the true breed yellow pod is not their parent. Then he took the green pod from first filial generation and did the self-pollination with it. And as a result, the second filial generation shows that out of four plants, three plants have green pods, but one plant have yellow pods. So with this experiment, Mendel concluded that each parent contribute particles or genetic units to the offsprings called genes. And as we know, the genes have variations and the variant part of gene is called as allele. So the genes for the green pod were capital G and capital G and for the yellow pod, it is small g and small g. According to Mendel, at the time of gamete formation, these genes got segregated from each other and participate equally and then make the first filial generation. Now the first filial generation have capital G and small g as a gene. By this way, we can categorize them as a homozygous generation and a heterozygous generation. Homozygous means that the genes have same alleles as in the parent generation, they have capital G, capital G, and small g, small g. For heterozygous, they have two different variant forms of genes in that individual. Now we have two different type of categories. The one category is a parent, that is the green color or yellow color, so we can call it a phenotype. And the second category belongs to the genes as this parent generation and the first filial generation have the same color but have different genes, so they have different genotype there. Now, this yellow color doesn't appear in the first filial generation, so the green color is a dominant trait and the yellow color is the recessive trait. Now, this information is similar for every characteristics of the pea plant. So, we have a dominant trait and we have a recessive trait. So, purple color flower is dominant over white, Tall plant is dominant over short plant. Yellow seed color is dominant over the green seed color. The round seed is dominant over the wrinkled one. The green pod is dominant over the yellow pod. The inflated pod is dominant over the constricted part. And axial flower position is dominant over the terminal position. Now with all this information, let's verify the experiment did by Mendel. So we are going to use the Punit scare for the parent pea pod color inheritance. As the parent generation have the true breed homozygous green pod having capital G, capital G as a gene, and a true breed yellow homozygous plant having small g and small g. So we are going to put this capital G and capital G over here, 
and this small g small g over here and then we are going to see all the possible combinations these gametes will make the possible combination by mating homozygous green pod with homozygous yellow pod it is capital g and small g the green pod is dominant trait over the yellow pod so all the f1 generation was green so that was a genuine explanation that why the yellow color was not showing in the f1 generation now let's see the F2 generation. So the punit scare for F1 generation P pod color inheritance is here. F1 generation is a heterozygous generation having capital G and small g as a genotype. So we are going to put capital G and small g on each side like this. The first possible combination is capital G and capital G. That is a true breed green plant. The second combination is small g with capital G, so it will be a heterozygous green plant. The third possibility is the capital G with the small g, so it is again a heterozygous green plant. And the last combination is small g with small g, and that is the characteristic for a yellow pod. So that's why the phenotypic ratio for Mendel's observation was 3 ratio 1. And if we look at the genotypic ratio, then it will be 1 ratio 2 ratio 1. So by this way, Mendel's hypothesis becomes a law. And the law of segregation says when gamete forms, alleles are separated so that each gamete carry only one allele for each gene. If we are going to observe only one characteristics of the pre-plant, then it will be called as monohybrid cross. Now let's apply all the information that we learned right now on a human being. Now as we know that human beings have 23 pair of chromosomes, out of which 22 pair of chromosomes are autosome that is same in both male and female, and 6 chromosome is different in male and female. So if it is X and Y, then it is a male category. And if it is XX, then this is a female category. Now, if we look closely at each pair of chromosome, we can see that there are two homologous chromosomes having two sister chromatids with it. And all these different color sections are basically showing the genes present on that particular chromosome. Okay, now during the gamete formation, we know that gamete formation occurs by the process called as meiosis. And meiosis have two stages. In meiosis 1, the homologous chromosomes get separated from each other. And in meiosis 2, the sister chromatids got separated from each other. And then we have four daughter cells in each case. So if this meiosis is occurring inside a man, then all these cells will mature themselves in sperms. And if it is occurring inside a female, then one of the cells becomes an egg followed by three polar bodies. And that's how the law of segregation apply on human beings. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe our channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.